going to talk about decentralizing paths for network indexers. Uh, this follows some talks about the network indexers uh, in general. Um, and the current architecture is a um, centralized system. Uh, so the network indexers that we were describing um, come, in, come in as one additional content routing system uh, for IPFS networks. Uh, there are many existing content routing systems out there. Uh, this is probably not even a full mapping of these. This is just kind of the 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 widest widest used ones. Um, so the the public DHT is by far the most common content routing system. Um, there are also automatic like local area network DHTs that form. Uh, so if you're if your uh, regular most Kubo and a couple other implementations do this, where they disconnect from the rest of the world, they will form automatic DHTs in, in the LANs and so on. Uh, so those already exist. Uh, many private networks out there exist today that run their own separate DHTs. Um, there's the Hydra boosters that you heard about, um, and there's been uh, other talks about them in the past um, that come in and support the public DHT. So that's a, a, it's not a separate content routing system, but it's a subsystem that ends up helping the public DHT. Um, there's a bit swap content routing uh, tool, which um, there's there's a frequent um, there are ways of enhancing bit swap into sort of like hack content routing in a sense, where um, you can um, use wants uh, and so on within bit swap itself to just optimistically end up in a spot where you're likely to to um, uh, already be connected to peers that have the content or they're connected to somebody that has the content. Um, so there are ways to kind of uh, hack that, and, and there's been many people that have uh, tried things like that. Um, and then there's just local DNS, MDNS discovery. So many IPFS implementations have ways of connecting in local area networks using um, standard um, uh, protocols. And once nodes find each other and connect to each other, uh, they'll automatically bit swap content to each other. So there's kind of this implicit uh, content routing discovery loop where nodes that happen to be in the same network will happen to connect to each other. Once they're connected to each other, content requests will just work. Um, but there's, there's kind of an implicit content routing system there. It's not um, an explicit thing that you, you enable. Now, um, the store the hash uh, indexer uh, you just heard about, um, and so there's one uh, additional content routing system. There's going to be many more. So over time, the community is going to experiment with a lot of tools. Um, and uh, I'm just going to kind of go through a few, um, and, and by the way, all these are kind of, all these systems are optional and different groups connect to different systems and they have different reasons for using them. Um, I think we're still working on how to build composability into the system. Like how could you compose these into a thing that just kind of works for most use cases? This tends to be, um, uh, it's, it's not clear that there is a just work solution because uh, there's a lot of um, security considerations uh, and authentication considerations in terms of where you want to um, ship your reader, your your queries to. Uh, so as we'll see tomorrow, um, there's a lot of privacy constraints here. Uh, but anyway, um, it, nevertheless, w when shifting a lot of content into um, into one indexer uh, that currently centralized, um, it'd be good to kind of describe what are the paths that we're considering for turning this into a different uh, centralized network. Um, one other thing worth noting, like the amount of data that store the hash is storing now just can't go into the DHT. It's just an enormous amount of data. So like it's either like spam the DHT and like <laughs> wreck it or, or do this. Um, the, um, so we're currently, uh, these are like five different ideas or five different paths. Uh, there are many more potential things, but just to give you a sense of different directions. Um, one very simple thing that we can do is to follow a, a model similar to the gateway model where there are just a lot of different indexers and there's a registry of indexers. If there's something like less than 10 indexers uh, that are big, this can work fairly well. And um, uh, 10 different organizations in um, networks tend to work reasonably well. It's not great, it's not a, an ideal solution, but it can work for some period of time. Um, I wouldn't take any one of these solutions as permanent. I would think of all of these as kind of transient systems. And so uh, federated separate systems could work fairly well. The gateways are doing that today. Uh, they're working quite well, um, and so on. There was, in the past, people were considering building one gateway out of multiple gateways, but that would have been um, you know, kind of like integrating them. So that's kind of like this second idea, which is could you take multiple different 
um, organizations that together work on maintaining one system. Um, for something like the gateways, I probably wouldn't recommend that because um, the gateways problem um, is, is high, like performance is a, it's a huge constraint and the variance of applications is very high. And so you end up with different gateways that tune for different use cases. Um, but that's not the case with indexers. With indexers, it's basically the same problem. Um, and here we can follow a, we could take a path similar to the DRAN network. So the DRAN network is a, um, a, a uh, blockchain randomness beacon network um, that, that forms a, um, that emits a new um, bit of randomness every 30 seconds, no, every 10 seconds now, every second now, three seconds. <laughs> cool, so, so the DRAN network has a, um, here I'll sh uh, share, so that you can look at something. Um, so the DRAN network is a distributed randomness beacon. Um, it's built with, um, with the participation of many organizations. There, are, there is one um, set of large deployments of, of the DRAN system called the League of Entropy. And so there's a number of organizations that together run the League of Entropy. And the League of Entropy is one that deployment has multiple different networks that you can connect to that emit randomness at different rates. And so as long as, um, and so there's some security properties embedded in this protocol, um, and as long as um, uh, there's, there's some sort of trust threshold here where um, uh, this, this is a threshold cryptography um, uh, protocol, and as long as you trust um, enough participants uh, and you expect them to not cheat, um, then this, th this matches your security model and this can work. Uh, and so something like that can work here for uh, network indexers as well, where you could have an integrated system um, that works kind of like DRAND where you could have multiple different entities working together um, and maybe assigning portions of the index. So this might be sharding across parts of the key space uh, and so on. The problem with that is like it quickly will turn into you needing some way of showing when entities are working well or not against the protocol. You'll need to start defining what behavior, like what, what defecting from the protocol looks like um, and then have to start programming against it. Uh, we could also explore, explore like um, traditional peer-to-peer -peer techno uh, techniques against this, uh, similar to the DHD model. Uh, we could go into um, trying to, th th there's a lot of um, past protocol designs for things like this, so we could find a distributed peer-to-peer um, -peer indexing system um, that is, is meant to run in this kind of trustless but, but uh, working well enough um, uh, structure and arrive at a, at a good solution. Um, the problem is that we've looked at a lot of these kinds of things over time, and there are promising directions, but it's a pretty hard problem. Like you, you, in order to meet the scale requirements and the performance requirements, and knowing the fact that these indexers will become both very large, like we'll end up with large routers in, in, a, in a small number of locations, um, it's fairly difficult to guarantee that this will work really well. Um, there are other, other directions um, dealing with uh, with blockchain. So, so once you have smart contracts and mechanism design, you can do verifier networks where you can use blockchains to um, uh, commit resources against running an indexer. You can do things like um, uh, check that participation is, is continuing to work well. Um, you can reward participants for doing this. And, and this is the kind of thing that can yield the hardware build out that I was talking about earlier. We can get to content routers that are massive scale, localized, and work really well if we have a proper um, economic model for how, to, how you run these things. Um, that's one of the things that, that's one of the other no things that might make structured peer-to-peer -peer not work. Uh, once you deal with massive amounts of traffic, it costs a lot of money. Um, and so if you want to run massive amounts of traffic with high availability, um, you need an economic model to support that, especially if you want to go to regions all over the world. Uh, so you could do this as kind of as an L2, L2 chain. Uh, you could also do take Utico, um, the hierarchical consensus tool that exists today, and just create like an entire like L1 chain just for indexing, um, with or without it. Like you could start it today without economic structures and see kind of how this this thing might work, uh, and then over time evolve it to to have uh, some incentive structures. So uh, these are like five possible paths. Um, all of these are, have varying degrees of complexity, varying degrees of um, of utility over time. Um, it's a time to like discuss these things because we could take many different paths here. 
um, or we could take one of any of these paths. Um, and so if people have opinions about the direction they should go, definitely come talk to um, the network index or team. Uh, cool, that's, that's it for that. Any questions on this? Um, Yeah, it would, it would depend on, on the structure here. Like, what exactly do you do? Like, what topology do you uh, use? Like, are these full, in the, full replicas everywhere? Or do you do some of that regioning that I was describing earlier today of, like, do you split things up such that indexers in, in particular regions get different distribution of, of content? Um, it's likely that you, you have one content set that you want to be available everywhere in the world um, with very high, with like extremely low latency. And then you have a different con uh, set, which is um, you're okay with like a, that content being available in a set of regions and you're willing to pay for that being like super low latency, but then you're okay with 100 millisecond or you know, um, one second latency from everywhere else in the world. And so it kind of depends on the latency requirements uh, that you need for, for that content. Like once you start pushing into petabyte scale indices, um, the users, goals really matter. Because um, also if you, if you have a massive content index inside of a data center that's just content that's relevant in that data center and not really outside, um, you don't necessarily, you, you don't want those applications to have to like come up with some economic model to move all of that data out into the rest of the world and replicate that everywhere else. Um, yep. Um, is there a solution you um, prefer using would be more relevant um, um, for instance, specifically for like web users, for instance? Um, like, uh, like specific use, like some of these approaches mapping better to specific use cases that people have. Um, I mean, I think, I think for web use cases, um, you certainly don't need like the intra data center content routers, right? With web users, you definitely want content to be accessible, um, at least some fraction of it globally and a large fraction of it regionally with very, very high, with very low latency. Um, so I think you would probably want some kind of, you, you might be able to scale one single index and replicate it everywhere, but I think that would get into the scale of like, I don't know, five to 10 petabytes of content. And so you would need five to 10 petabytes of index um, everywhere. And that's fairly big. Like if, if it was 100 terabytes, 100 terabytes of petabyte, that's easy to replicate around the world. Um, so that one order of magnitude is like kind of annoying. You go from, you know, a box this big to like a whole rack. Um, and so that, that difference just makes, it, makes the scale go from one person can go and set something up in one data center or in one internet exchange to, no, you need like a whole team to operate this thing long term. Um, and so I think like the more we can end up with one box replicated everywhere, that's that, that you can get 10,000 copies over like a thousand copies of and like no problem. Yeah. A thousand problem. Maybe not 10,000. Um, other questions? Yep. Um, is it on the plan at all? Maybe I've missed it, but in the first model that I did that separate, that, um, you know, like, Different entities could go and set up an indexer node, and by that they can kind of observe requests coming in. And at the same time, they act as a retrieval provider um, where they have big enough cash to catch the most popular, and then that's how they make money out of you know, catching the most popular in their region. Uh, so they have an incentive to actually keep an up to date indexer node. Yeah, you could. Uh, a problem there is that you might get into this conflict of interest where they're supposed to run this like indexer and provide all providers, but then if they're making money on the retrieval side, then they might like only start showing that one. You get into these like it's kind of like when when a when a when a search engine 
also runs the shopping tool or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, oh, check out these results. Click yeah. here and don't look at these other like uh, lower price items, right? And so like that's that's the issue. I think you can you can turn it into a thing that has th that could still work well if you have a good guarantee about all the providers being being returned and um, the right metrics being gathered. Um, then I think you can arrive and like the internet today has good. There are many systems that like fall into this, and and we have found good ways of handling it. Um, but I do think that given that we have mechanism design and blockchains already, and they're well deployed, just use those. Just use those to verify that operation is correct. I think um, it has to do with all the content providing economic models. So if the, like one of the main problems that we provide is the main one for some content, because I have to pay this particular one, then you know, I can always, it's always in the best interest of everyone to get a cached copy of my content closer to where some other uh, requests, if the request is. But then this guy serving the content always returns back a share of the money that they're going to get because I should be the primary one. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you could have a model where you can use um, cryptography and um, smart contracts in, in like a blockchain setting without needing an economic model. Meaning you could run a separate blockchain that has no economic incentives. It's run by this federation and you encode in it the way of checking that behavior is correct. Like you figure out the cryptographic protocol part of it yeah. and you just use it as a way, as a mechanism to catch misbehavior and slash it. Or like you, sorry, you don't necessarily slash economically, but you can like have a reputation system. You could you could go back to the peer-to-peer -peer history. Like there's tons of reputation systems there. You could just use one of those, and that's your economic model. And if your reputation drops below a certain rate, then you get expelled. Uh, so I think something like that could totally could totally work. Uh, other questions? Thoughts? Suggestions? Other models? Cool. All right. One yep. question is anyone who's running a gateway, if they can solve the if they can just resolve content routing locally at their gateway, that's a nice win on performance and on predictability. Yeah. And so there's a question of what do we need to get to for that to happen? And it's something about being able to follow the current AGT and having that you're willing to just use your local network hookup and not pull out all the content routing. Yeah. You feel like you do have the full index of everything that's content addressed. Okay. So I guess there's some different small much of that HTTP call available back to something like store the app. You'd want to see before you feel comfortable with just doing the local network. Yeah. Um, because once you get there, then there's that motivation that anyone who's running yeah, we, we could follow a model kind of like NTPs or DRANs. Um, so we we um, we base DRANs um, cache layers on the NTP structure, where you have one set of authoritative nodes that is figuring out reality. And then there's a set of nodes that are just caching and extending. So you could have a model like this where there are these network indexer cache copies, and they're they're not writable at all. Um, and you can you when you run a gateway or some large service, you can run one of these entirely and stay up to date from the indexer. So content still has to go through the indexer and then propagate it down. But then you can now run one full one full replica here. Tibo, would that be interesting to you guys? Yeah, I'm thinking that. Um, and just now, something that we started thinking about. Um, I know that for Python, I reached out for it um, by getting ready an index up. At the moment, the new project has a 14 or 15 million people. Yep. Um, do you guys talk about content routing as a thing and moving the world towards that? So, not at the moment, um, especially because we've mainly focused on like um, setting HTTP, uh, but the content routing. Especially is like we do, like we're trying like like historically, Kafka used to operate like Amp is like certain Kubernetes clusters, um, and now like we're trying to move towards like 
operating more like like a like civilian scale and the entire clean to spots. Um, and so that becomes a lot more prevalent issue um, in order to know where the conflict is, where it has to be, uh, and how do we provide it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Cool. Uh, any other any other thoughts, questions? All right, sounds good. Thank you.